Now, uh, well, uh, for openers, I don't know how to work this machine. I'm just astounded at this machine. This is the silliest way I've ever known of spending the nights alone talking to yourself into an obvious Nazi machine. This is a red China Manchurian candidate machine because I can't get anything on tape. And when I do record anything, I automatically erase it and I'm sitting in a room all by myself, ho, ho, boy. And across the room on my library shelf are about 35 tapes of shows that I've done for CBS. Hmm. 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 Now, in those boxes that hold the tapes, my life depends on those, and yet I don't know how to work. That's not my business. I was trying to be a singer. I don't know how to read notes. I can't read music. And I don't... I can't count too well. And I don't know how to work this machine. But that's the story of my life. You go with it even if you don't know what's going on. Keep talking, singing, smiling, and taping. Somebody tell me that this... Uh, might be interesting, but I've gotten so involved with this Donovan's brain machine, tape machine. It should be Johnson and Johnson's tapes. My wounds I'd like to tape. But I just am trying to get a few thoughts done, and then I'm all by myself, uh, as usual and trying to go straight with myself. Now, that makes you feel kind of dumb. <laughs> you can't, I can't, have, can't find my glasses to read the directions. I don't know what 33 and a third means. That just means out of sync to me. And uh, then they got all kinds of kind of early <laughs> Franz Joseph directions that uh, I'm not equipped for. I have done, believe me, I have done two, what do they call it, spools of tape, of talking. I think I erased the whole thing and just Peggy Lee and myself came on in a rehearsal tape that played backwards. I wonder if Sid Luft's mother makes these machines. Could be. She made all those machines. She made Sid. She spawned him in the the uh, Red Sea somewhere, I think. But to... Um, yeah, let's just think about my trying to be heard. Do you realize how many people have talked about me, written about me? imitated me, told my children that they really know me. They know Judy Garland. My little girl, Liza, came home one day from school. She was about 10 years old, and she said, what is this? She has a lovely kind of Italian indi indignation, that, uh, indignity, I should say. Yeah, see, I can't read, write, or talk too well. Uh, but it's all in the machine. Uh, maybe Madison Avenue puts out these machines. Yeah. Webster and Madison. At any rate, Liza came home from school one day and said, uh, what, a, what is this nonsense that I always hear at school that everybody knows you, Judy Garland. Everybody knows Judy, but, yeah, but they really know her. 
No, they really know her. They knew her when she lived in Transylvania. They had the house next door, and they heard all the the uh, insanity of of uh, Mama. And Liza looked at me and simply said, "Look, I don't know you, Mama, and nobody ever will. I never will." <laughs> That's my girl. Well, we know each other pretty well. I'm rather proud of that. So far, I think I'm on a blank tape. I don't know. And I might admit defeat at this point. I doubt it. I have a tenacity of a praying mantis. Uh, with a little black Irish witch involved. Let's see if we got anything. Hmm? Just played that last, uh... This upload is made by the concluding chapter of Crawford. I just played that last uh, bit of tape that I tried to do. And it, something came out that sounded okay, I guess. I think it was me. Uh, I can so always uh, truthfully say that nobody asked me. Nobody asked me. I was too little when I went into the vaudeville. I was two years old, and I just knew Jingle Bells, and my grandmother threw me on my father's stage. He owned the theater in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. And I just sang Jingle Bells, and nobody told me to stop, so nobody ever asked me. Now, I've never bothered to answer, because the questions have never been quite clear. But I can sit here now at a nifty age of 41 and honestly say there's just me and this machine, baby. <laughs> and I don't know whether anybody's interested or not, but I am. I worked uh, very hard, and there's all the success and failure and fatigue and overweight and thinness and tears and laughter and Halloween and no... Cre oh, well, really. It's like something out of Tess of the Storm Country. Uh, I cannot take myself seriously because if I did, I would have died a long time ago. And I don't want to die. I've never met a cast of people I want to die with. You go on an airplane, look around the people reading the Reader's Digest or whatever, you don't want to die with them. First place you get... I'll get top billing. Judy Garland dies in plane crash for other... Uh, deceased turned to section B, page 18. And then they take them alphabet, And they're a peculiar bunch. What are we doing flying around in airplanes for one thing? We, we're not, even the birds don't go up that high. We just don't belong. We have to buckle ourselves in and hope. And there's no hope and no oxygen. Now, we don't belong up there. Now, you know we don't belong up there. At least that I don't uh, understand. I have to make friends with the pilot and uh, give his children my autograph. Whereupon he tells me that uh, his children are just as important to him as my life. Forget it. I'm, his life isn't nearly as important as my life is to me. Sheer selfishness. I don't really care about anybody but me. <laughs> and when my number is up, I want a new one. And I have no intention of checking out. Now, this machine isn't going to get me either. One way or another... We're going to overcome it. <laughs> I'll say. See? There have been people like spooks that go in and out of my life. I don't think many of them are terribly interesting. But I have many, many interesting, good, solid, talented, lovely people that I can... that have taught me the meaning of 
laughing, being able to laugh at oneself. I am funny. I attract, well, inanimate objects just uh, uh, ruin me. I can check into a hotel to do a one-night stand concert and try to go into the closet to get my dress off a hanger and an absolutely strange, strange, mind you, little wire hanger without one thing on it flies off from left field and hits me right in the nose. A lot of people hit me in the nose. I got a kind of nice nose. Hmm. I keep breathing. My antrums. Hmm. They get a little stuffy now and then, but by goodness sake, keep breathing in and out. I have a rather good intellect. I have a good sense of humor, but it's high time to cut the comedy and high time to stop the trolley ride because I, Judy Garland, I'm going to talk. And everybody just better sit on the bench and watch the ball game. This upload is made by the concluding chapter of Crawford. And put the pattern straight, I'm outraged. I'm outraged about many things that I've read about myself, that people have said. They've affected me deeply. Now I'm going to talk back. I'm going to talk in my own words and tell the truth, so here goes. And if I sound like the lady does protest too much, don't get the idea that by telling my story and I have a right to don't think that comes from anything but having been treated and treated badly written about in a shocking manner smeared scandalized and I'm sick of it. I've come to a time in my life when I don't want it anymore, and I can't rise above it. I can't rise above the scandalous, obscene lies that have been the so-called printed word. And I can't rise above the gossip mongers that have... Well, all of it is affected my children, my health, and my work. By writing the truth, perhaps the effects will not be so painful to my family and to me. First of all, I don't understand. I don't honestly understand why I've been the victim and been made the victim of so many untruths. Perhaps you don't understand what it's like to pick up a paper and read things about yourself that aren't true read loathsome things that have nothing to do with your life or you or your heart or your beliefs or your kindnesses or your willingness I've spent years and years and years trying to please through singing or acting. There's nothing wrong with that. And yet, I've constantly been written or talked about by certain individuals 
that I'll get to later. As an unfit person, well, what kind of people are they? What kind of business are they in? They're dead people. But they've tried to kill me along the way, and by God, they won't. They won't. Because I'm mad. I'm a very lucky woman in some ways. I'm a very lucky woman to have come to this time of my life and found happiness with a fine man, a fine man, a man who is able to love me. Not just that I'm able to love, but the fact that he loves me. I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of the fact that Mark Heron loves me. Just me. Whether I sing or dance or whether I don't. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm very proud. It's made me prettier than ever. That's what my my oldest daughter, Liza, tells me I'm prettier than ever. Liza has grown up to be a strong, beautiful, talented, fine, fine, sensitive, courageous young woman. I'm proud of that. I did that alone. I raised that little girl alone because nobody cared about us. Nobody cared. Oh, they cared about the money that I brought in because they made it made them rich. Lots of people got rich off of me. My children didn't get rich. I didn't get rich. And Mark Heron didn't get rich. But we have a love. My little boy, Joe. My little girl, Lorna. My young lady grown-up daughter, Liza, Mark, myself. We have a love that makes everything else look just stupid. Sid Luft is an animal. He's just some kind of breed. And I'll tell the world whenever I can, that he's a thief, a blackmailer, a sadist, and a man who doesn't even care one bit, one way or the other, about any other living soul, let alone his nice children. He's never contributed one penny to their upbringing. He's never contributed one hour to their peace of mind. He's told them how untalented they are, how stupid they are, who needs them. He's told them how he doesn't like them. That's a nice man. That's a big, upstanding tramp. Well, maybe he's in with the judges in Santa Monica court so that I can't even get to see my children now that I live in England 
because I can't live with the stench of the Santa Monica courts and the stench of Sid Luft and the stench of lawyers who rob me and just keep it going, keep the case going. Judy's crazy. Judy doesn't know what she do. I know well enough how to raise three kids and damn well. And I know how to be loved by a man who understands the pressures I've had to go through. And it, it's worth it. It's worth it. And the hell with all the crazy fan mail, so-called fan mail. The letters get saying, you've sinned, Judy. Turn to Christ. I go to church every Sunday. I've got God in my heart. That's more than most of you can say. My children have it. Mark Heron has it. And we present an army. We represent strength and goodness. And by God, justice had better prevail. Although I doubt it. Being Judy Garland is quite a chore. Not only for me, but for Mark, for Joe, for Lorna, and Liza. But it's not too much of a chore for Sid Luft. And it wasn't too much of a chore for Vincent Minnelli to just overlook the fact that he had a magnificent daughter. Being Judy Garland, sure, I've been loved by the public. I can't take the public home with me. And I've been ripped to pieces, ripped to pieces by the public and the critics and the newspapers and people who don't know what they're talking about. And I demand, I demand to be heard. I will be heard and I'll keep talking for the rest of my life because now I can talk. Now I'm happy. Now I know that there is no gaslight in my life and the people who try to present it are the criminals. And it all comes down to the unholy dollar. Well, I'll always be able to make money, but I'll keep it. I'll keep it for my children, myself, and I won't pay. $25,000 a year to a bum, to Sid Luft, who's a bum, a tramp. And so is his mother, and so is his sister, his whole rotten background. And I'm not afraid People who say they should hold marriages together are, my God, my God, what happens to the children if you expose them to a, to a, a mongrel. He wants money. He's not ably, able to to do anything mentally and he's a paranoid but physically he's capable let him get his fanny out and go to work I'm not paying for him anymore I'm not paying for anybody who tries to rob me not rob I'll pay I'll pay just the way everybody else has to pay, money. If you buy something, 
you pay money. If you owe a bill, you pay it. I'm a very honest woman. Nobody's ever encouraged me to talk before. It's a little difficult to sit and talk about yourself. I'm a very modest woman. I've always believed in that terrible cliché. Uh, whatever is printed in the paper today is yesterday's news. That's a lot of nonsense. I get mail. And fie, fie on the rotten poison pen letters. The people who write those are demented. I'm going to live a life that is as splendid as my surroundings are. My man and my children. I'll get my children. I support my children. I've brought them up and I love them and they love me. I respect them. I worship them. They give me the same respect, the same love in return. They're brave children. They have to be. Look who their father is. What's he ever contributed? What's he ever done? What's he ever done for the world? He and his friends. I wish they would all get lost. How can they use two fine children and put a price on both those children's heads so the children can come and be with their mother? It's not that I'm wailing like a an old-fashioned mother. I need them. I need them as much as they need me. I need their laughter. I need their arms around me until they grow up and it's time for them to go about their own lives. I want to be fair, but I want them with me. I gave birth to them. I supported them. I loved them. I I still do. But for goodness sakes, for God's sakes, what about the lawyers? What about the judges? What, they're being handed over to a man. If I can, I hate that word in connection with Sid Love. Michael Sidney Love is not a man. He's not a father. He's not a worker. He's not a contributor. He's not anything. He's a pimp. There is no community property. He drew up an agreement before he married me, saying there was no community property because he didn't want to support his ex-wife's son, his son and his ex-wife. I won't give him a cent. I won't give him the time of day, but I wish to God somebody would come to my aid. The judges sit down. I don't know how he pays them off. Sitting, my children are stuck in Santa Monica. They didn't even get to visit me on school vacation because I'm supposed to be an unfit mother. I've been working my head off. Somebody had to feed my children, and that was me. And it was my pleasure because they, in return they gave me laughter, love, comfort, beauty. But it was damned hard to keep from climbing up the wall with frustration. So I'm not going to be frustrated anymore. I'm going to talk. And somebody's going to print this. Even if I have to put up the money myself, 
I'll print it in a little book. Maybe somebody will read it. And maybe somebody will learn a little bit of the, of the truth of this so-called legend. I, that's why I'm supposed to be a legend. Judy Gar, all right, then read about it. Read the truth, though. I want to love. I want to be friendly. I want to work. Don't get in my way. And don't let other people get in my way. Get off my back. Let my loved ones stay around me. Let me stay around them. Let me live, for God's sake, let me live. To start with, if anyone's going to print anything about me, write anything about me, it'll be me. I'll print about me. I'll write about me because I'm the only one who knows. And I just refuse to stay silent anymore. Well, everyone else makes news about me, so-called news. It's very untrue news. And I'll never again be made the target to some demented, sick mind that just wants to print bad things the hell with the good things. And there have been a lot of good things. I'll never be that kind of target again. There's no more over the rainbow for me. I've grown up. And those days are over. There's nothing about me to threaten by exposure. I've been exposed since I was a little girl, wrongly exposed, news was made, bad news. I know exactly who did it, how it was done, why it was done. I'm not a stupid woman. Now, those people are going to be exposed, and it's going to be fun. I've waited a long time for this, and revenge can be very sweet. When it is proper and right, I'm a very revengeful person now. I don't want any more lies printed about me. My children read the newspapers. They have to put up with their schoolmates and what their mates say about me. They do the best they can. They don't pay any attention to it. They've learned better. And they're smarter. But I don't want somebody who is retarded writing columns or saying things like, <coughs> like Miss Hedda Hopper or Miss Luella Parsons, who seem, they seem to be terribly important. I don't want them to say, poor, poor Judy, right after I've triumphed at the Palladium in London. Write something good about me. I've been nice to them. I've been polite. You ought to see the condition they're in. Oh, boy. I know their makeup man. I know the tricks they have to do to pull those women's faces up so they can look human. No more. No, sir. I'm going to talk, 
And there's a little woman by the name of, what's her name? Oh, well, there's a Sheila Graham. The ex-girlfriend of a very good writer, F. Scott Fitzgerald, who unfortunately died 30 years ago. And she's been using him and everybody else. She's a fat, red-headed English idiot. But she gets paid. Now, I'm going to get paid. Or they're going to get paid off. But to get back to Sid Loft, let's just concentrate on him. Let's expose him. This isn't a court trial, a court case anymore over the children. This is a vendetta, my personal vendetta to f for what he's done to the children, to Joey and Lorna. He can't. He's incapable. He is incapable of ever getting their respect or their love because he hasn't given them either one. They don't like him. I don't blame them. He smells. He's got every racetrack book here, or whatever you call it, wh whoever he's cheated in every part of the world. They're after him, but they, you know, they come to me first because they know he hasn't got a cent because he doesn't work, but he gambles, so they come to me. I won't pay him. I don't gamble. Let him get out and let them shoot at him or kill him or make him work. Not for my children. Who needs him? He's a drunk and a derelict. Take a look at his face. You ought to hear him talk to the press someday. You ought to go through what I've gone through, sitting in court, and hear him lie, and hear the judge say, yes, and the lawyers say, yes. After all, he's the father of these children. What the hell has he ever done? I'll tell you what he's done because I know all about him, and I'm the only one who can tell it. And I'm the only one who will be heard. I'm not afraid of him. I hate his guts. And my children can read this too because they hate his guts. What about his mother? Oh, boy. What a sticky, stinking bunch to be caught up with. But they caught me up because I made money. But he made me sick. Now I'm going to make him sick. I'm going to make him so sick. He's been digging his own grave for a long time. Now he can just put his rotten self into the grave and put the dirt over it. Yeah, this is a rough story, and I sound like a rough woman. 
I am about Sid Luft. I am about a lot of people. Except my son and my two daughters and the man I'm in love with. And I have a right to be in love. And I have a right to be loved. And I have a right to get a divorce from a criminal and to be married properly. I want my son, Joey, to give me away at my wedding to Mark Heron. Mark Heron wants Joey to be his best man. I want my Lorna, my daughter, to be a bridesmaid. I want Liza to be to stand up with me in a lovely way. And I'm going to wear white. White. White satin. And white lace. And white pearls. Because I am pure. And I'm marrying pure. And my children are pure. So you see, it's not all crazy and insane the way people like to write it. Maybe this will be a news item. I can't believe the people that have worked for me, the publicity men, like Guy McElwain, when I'm smeared and my children have to read the papers and it's agony for them. He says, well, don't pay any attention to it and don't answer it. Don't try to say anything good in defense of yourself because that's not news. I can't believe that and I won't. Because I know about his life, too. And he's pretty crummy. He got paid a lot. But for a statement like that, that's a pretty stupid press agent. I've been a stupid woman because I wanted to believe in people who I was paying thousands of dollars to. Well, they're going to have to prove themselves right to me before they get a penny or a minute of my time. I've sung. I'll be friendly. I am friendly. I like people to be friendly to me, but for goodness sakes fellas and women. Let's deal the cards right. And while we're talking about dealing cards, why don't all you people who Sid Luft has gambled with and lost, why don't you collect your money? Don't look to me for it. I go out and I work. My mark works. That's to support our children. Our children. Because in the eyes of God, we are a family. And that's more than most legends or anything else can say. Mark has given me courage 
Mark has given me love. Mark has given the children love. Mark is so wonderful that it's hard for the rest of mankind to understand him. I understand him. I understand what he's given to me. I understand what he's given to Liza and to Lorna and to Joe. They understand it too. He's the only father they've ever had. He's gentle, but by gosh, he's strong. And I love Mark Heron. And Mark Heron loves me. What's so silly about that? What's so crazy? We will be married. We are correct, nice people. I will have more babies. With my husband, Mark, we will have a wedding ceremony. There'll be over the rainbow for me. This upload is made by the concluding chapter of Crawford. I've just about got it made. All I have to do is talk. And all you have to do is read or listen. And believe me, the way you believed me when I sang all the songs. Well, now I'm talking and listen to me, for goodness sakes. Don't make a joke of me anymore. People say, and print and believe the stupid ones and the mon the minority that I'm either a drunk, a drug addict, or what it's a goddamn wonder I'm not. But I'm not. Because there's Joe, Lorna, Liza, Mark and me and whoever wants to love us is welcome whoever is against us get out it's very difficult indeed to record very difficult to record one's thoughts alone. And when I play back the tapes, I hear that I slur my words very badly, but that doesn't make too much difference as long as my thoughts are not slurred. I'd like to talk about my three successful children. Their great successes unto themselves without an awful lot of help. I gave them so-called instant love because I had to work to support them. Nobody else would. And that meant I had to leave them many times. And that meant I had to make them believe in my love when I left them. And that meant that I, they had to know that I would come back. It also had to mean that they had to know that I had a life, that I would be well, and that when they grew up, they could leave me 
and that I would be all right then. It's not easy to take. Oh, no, you think all kinds of things. It's all kinds of modern care unto yourself. You think, oh, well, I raised my children. If you're all, all alone and raising children, you do the best you can. Well, I've done a hell of a good job. You take a look at those three children. They're individual. They're beautiful. They're dynamic. They're powerful. They're loving. They're full of sunshine. Very seldom full of sadness. And they're outgoing. And they know the score. And they're all three very handsome. And they all three love me. Just the way I love them. We're four people. They're people, not children. They're children, not people. Whichever way you want to put it. I respect them. I disciplined because that was the only way I could give them security. I objected many times. I will not have spoiled children. I'm not a spoiled woman. Spoiled children won't get on well with the rest of the world. They're not spoiled. But they're smart, loving, and talented. And I'm a terribly, terribly lucky woman. I've been able to be honest with them, and I have enable them to be honest with me. If for nothing else, for that, I'm proud. This upload is made by the concluding chapter of Crawford. I think I have every right to write a book. I think I'm interesting. I have perspective about me. I am Gemini, the personality most likely to split. I never allowed myself a split personality. I've never allowed myself to even have too bad a head cold when it came time to go on stage because my parents have been an audience. They at least put their hands together and made a sound called applause and a warmth hit me from a spotlight and somehow I've always known that my home, I'm in love with my audience. I'm in love with people. Hopeless. I'm a believer in decency, in the decency of a rainbow and of people. Not many people around me have given me any reason to believe my own beliefs. My beliefs being a way of laughter, loving your children, 
loving life, enjoying a bag of popcorn, liking a roller coaster ride. Living legends evidently don't go on roller coasters, but I've been put on one, and it's been a damn fast ride, but it's been a, an interesting one. I think interesting enough, finally, for me to tell. This upload is made by the concluding chapter of Crawford. I'm very self-conscious about talking about myself. But I think I've got something to write about at last. If you like it, you'll like it. If you don't like it, you won't like it. But you won't be able to take it lightly any more than I've been able to take it lightly. I've laughed at myself when I should have cried. And I've cried because I had every reason I got damn mad. I'm an angry lady. I'm a lady who is angry. I've been insulted, slandered, humiliated, but still America's sweetheart. Now I'm a rather intelligent, I think, or, and I'm emotional, yeah, I'm a woman, I'm emotional, I'm not something you wind up and put on a stage that sings Carnegie Hall album and you put her in a closet and forget to invite her to the party that's given for her, the ages leave her behind. I'm mad, I am mad enough, and yet still very self-conscious that I'm going to write a book and I'm going to talk because I can do something besides sing, you know. I don't always have to sing a song. There is something besides the man that got away or over the rainbow or the trolley song. There's a woman. There are three children. There's me. There's a lot of life going here. I wanted to believe and I tried my damnedest to believe in the rainbow that I tried to get over, and I couldn't. So what? Lots of people can't. But I'm not lots of people. I'm me. I'm the one who's had to live with me. I don't want to hear any resentment from anybody else now about how difficult I am. And I don't want to pick up a paper and read how unfit a mother I am when I have three marvelous children who seem to take and have always loved me. Fat, thin, funny, sad. They think I'm pretty good. I think they're great. I have love and have never planned revenge. However, however this book turns out is because of, I am the result of an audience, of a critic, of critics, of what people have made me. And in the meantime, there's been another whole human being, myself, that hasn't been even interesting enough to write good stories in the newspapers that would be printed. They weren't, they're not interested. I, I'm a good cook. I am a good mother. I do believe in going to church. I love music. I love a lot of things that the people around me that have surrounded me all my life, all my 44 goddamn marvelous, failing, successful, and hopelessly <coughs> tragic and starlit years. I've been surrounded by people with 
who were not in my league. They were the disbelievers. Now they're going to have to put up with their names being printed. They better not sue because I'm only going to write it the truth. But in the meantime, how do I find the true Judy Garland or Francis Garland or whatever? Just a, a girl or a woman. I get angry, but I've never been allowed to be angry. I can get angry in front of my friend often. I suppose to transport the, I don't know. I and I use my I do get so frustrated. It's very difficult for everyone. It's all well and good for you people publishers. Now this is not to be included in my book. For Irving the Tsar to say just take fifty uh, pages and it would be taken off the table. But you can't write how nervous my hands get or how lost I might get when I have to remember because I went through five years of psychoanalysis going back over a life that was no good to begin with, no fun, and it's a little good. I'm doing it purely for money because I deserve it. I've sung. I've entertained, I've pleased your children, I've pleased your wives, I've pleased you, you sons of bitches! And you can't deny that! Now the government isn't pleasing me very much. They're not protecting me, they're going to move the house away with the kids. Sid Loft! is some kind of, and a lot of people belong in a thing in Southern California called the La Brea Tar Pits. I've maintained a way of life to not sink with the sludge. Now you better write it, you better pay for it, or don't listen and get the hell out of my life. This upload is made by the concluding chapter of Crawford. And you will also be able to tell, as I write the book after, I get enough money to take the time to write this marvelous story. You'll find that I'm, there's an awful lot of baggy pants comedy in me. There's a lot of tragedy, there's a lot of interest, there's a lot of practicality. The practical thing being that I do know what I'm worth. I'm supposed to do this tape and talk about what the book will be. That's what Irving told me to do. Swifty. Swifty has never had to sit down with a microphone and say what he's going to write. What is he write, in shorthand or talk in, in, in some kind of... Sanskrit is very difficult for me, but I'm going to write it for whoever it's, you're all up for grabs now. But I can guarantee you, even if I have to, to form a new publishing company and write this book, it's going to be one hell of a great, everlastingly great book with humor, tears, fun, emotion, and love. Off. This upload is made by the concluding chapter of Crawford. One, two, three, four, five. The book that I'm going to write has to have a title. It can be called Judy. It can be called So Far So Good. Or it can be called And now, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Judy Garland.
This upload is made by the concluding chapter of Crawford. I beat him in the field. They were in collusion and partnership, and they took me for a ride. And they owe me money, and that's all I want is money. I want my money. I worked hard. And they used me emotionally. It was emotional blackmail. Even depending on them, they sold me out. They didn't protect me. They took money from me that belongs to my children and myself, and I want it back. I want it back. Because I'll expose them. I want They humiliated me. David Beekerman especially. He's a crook. He was crooked with me. So was his wife. So was his partner because he decided to cover up with his partner. Maybe he didn't want to, and, but he couldn't help it because he was weak too, and they were both on the verge of being found out by me, just me. I'm not talking about Sid Luft. He's just as bad or worse. But I want my money. That's all. Just my money. And I'll get it. I worked hard. I was never protected in any way emotionally. Promises that I was given by Beagleman so that I would be financially independent never came true because he gambled away too much. He told me that there was a picture of my trying to commit suicide in England and within 24 hours somebody had to fly over to, well that to, so he could get the negative. Nobody ever heard of that negative or saw it and nobody in the English press would dare print a thing like that. Nobody saw it. When there were, there was all that money that came out of my earnings in Las Vegas for, he, as Bigelman said, for guards and so forth. Yes, I had guards. But I didn't have the amount of money paid out. That wasn't necessary. He's a gambler, an inveterate loser. And he used my money to gamble. He used me 
physically, mentally, emotionally, and so did Freddy. And these were the people that I depended upon. These were the people who loved me so much. That's beside the point. I have no feeling about them emotionally, but I want my money. They'll be exposed otherwise. They'll be put in jail. Along with the Sid Lufts of the world, I want my money. I want my children to have money. I don't want to have to work. I was told I would never have to work after I did my television shows, my series. I was also then not protected. They didn't even come around. They advised auditors like Charlie Rental and so on. There was no reason for income tax not being set aside monies for income tax, federal income tax in 1962. I was making money. I hate people who have stolen from me. I won't have it anymore. I'm not a child, and I'm not unwise. I prefer to be that way because I couldn't bear the thought that I didn't have. protection, but that's not true anymore. I'm big business. I am big business. And they used me. Now they're going to have to pay up. They're going to have to pay me. I started their business. very important now. They must be very rich. I'm not. I'm still working. I want that money back. I want lots of money back that they took. I hate them for scaring me. I hate them for not protecting me at CBS, but advising that I resign. Why didn't they? This upload is made by the concluding chapter of Crawford. And so, other people, other clients, that's why. They were afraid. So I was a patsy. Well, they'll pay. They must pay. I'll find ways. I won't sue along with Sid Lott. He's another criminal. But I don't want them handling my daughter because they're indecent. Maybe I finally got it wise. It's not easy for me. I wanted to have them as friends. I wanted to protect 
them. That's more than they do for me. I mean, I didn't want to and don't want their protection emotionally. I don't want their friendship. I want my money. And I want it right now. Right now. Because I'll expose them. They're shameful for what they did, and they know it. They know it. That's why Bigelman walked out without any reason. That's why I wasn't after he promised that I would be a wealthy woman if I just did my shows. Well, I did my shows as best I could, but nobody was around. But everybody in that office knew what was going on, and everybody else knew. Everybody put their cards on the table. I know what the cards are. I know I've been used as a joker, but no more. No more by anybody. Anybody. I hate anybody's guts to use me because I wanted to be a nice girl. Well, I'm not that same nice girl. I'm nicer than all of the criminals put together who have robbed me. to my lawyers 
Nobody will be protected by me because of emotions. I'll protect myself through legal channels and I'll ruin, ruin through newspapers, through courts. I've been blackmailed. I admit I've allowed it because I was lonely and scared. And I needed money and friendship and protection. I didn't get it. I'm not only ashamed of myself for being so childishly dependent, but I'm not that way anymore. And in so far as money, and that's all I'm interested in. Bigger than fields, metro, and every son of a bitch who's ever stolen from me had better get it up. Or they'll be hauled into court just by me. This upload is made by the concluding chapter of Crawford. to belong to you. But smile. And then a little while you might forget all the promises that belong to you. Was it wrong of you to believe what you hear what you could touch, what you could breathe, what you knew, what was you. How do you act when they move in and you don't even know who they are? But you always remember you're somewhere high like a star. So they are where they are, and you're what you are. So let them take it and laugh, and let them feel. But they tend not to feel. Not too much. A little guilt would be welcome from their part. Thank you. 
they owe me for a very important part of my heart that was put here when I thought that this house would always be mine. It represented what I was. Now, when they take it, let them make it what they want. This upload is made by the concluding chapter of Crawford.
since I've lost my This upload is made by the concluding chapter of Crawford. So far, I think this tape has been absolutely uh, outrageous. I've gone from one mood to the other, but I do want to finish it off by saying I've never sung, or even tried to sing that last song, but I never really realized what the words mean, and I wonder how poetry, uh, the poetry of Ira Gershwin, and... Uh, I beg your pardon, George Gershwin and Deborah Hayward. Just think of, my man's gone now. Ain't no use of listening for his tired footsteps climbing up the stairs. Oh, all my own sorrows come to keep me company whispering beside me when I say my prayers. Ain't that I mind working? Working me, we're travelers, journeying together to the promised land. The old man's sorrows marching all the way with me this video is brought to you by the concluding chapter of Crawford, a comprehensive research guide to Joan Crawford, www.theconcludingchapterofcrawford.com. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.